So yes, we meet with a lot of politicians and think tanks today. Uh, today, I think they will all ask, "How can we help you? What has to be done? Is there an answer to that question? What has to be done on the level f for on the ground? What has to be done? Can mm. you elaborate on that? What has to be done?" Um, Right. In Mongolia by the people, I guess. Right, right. So, um, again, um, uh, this political engagement or participation of society of citizens is important. Um, but there is... Um, uh, it's not because uh, of uh, lack of political interest, but it's because there isn't a, a way for the citizens or the members of the political parties to be involved to to raise their voices and concerns um, so maybe one the first um, uh, cooperation that can be done with Mongolia with Mongolian political parties to strengthen the, the the normal citizens where they hold the parties or the leaders accountable where they ask for um, how decisions were made uh, or to be involved to be engaged um, but in order to do that, they need to have information. So, um, and I, I, as I said, um, information is the currency of democracy, and so informing citizens or the members is uh, is very important at this level stage. Um, and uh, Mongolia is quite open, unlike Tanzania. Ten Tanzania. Tanzania. Uh, unlike the other countries. Um, Mongolia is quite open to um, cooperation, international uh, international cooperation and uh, implementing projects. Yes, I heard that there is a third neighbor policy. For example, the prime minister was in Germany meeting the chancellor. Right. How important are those diplomatic ties in the process? Right, and and because we have the third neighbor policy, yeah. you know, that's one of the reasons we. Uh, have maintained uh, independence um, from China and Russia, from its influences, um, and have managed to maintain the democracy that we uh, have had for about over 30 years now. But is it coming to? Is it? Is it ending? Is democracy dying? At the same time, uh, whenever you have politics um, involved. It's very difficult sometimes to get cooperation. I mean, openness, yes, to start with, you have openness, but it's very sensitive because we're talking about power. And if, uh, if the development uh, work that's being offered or being discussed um, may impact on the politics, there may be some pushback. On um, So it, it, it's a very sensitive um, uh, way to design these projects so that, firstly, that they don't see it as partisan because uh, they don't want uh, any pushback because of uh, perceived uh, partisan uh, on the, in the projects, and they have to feel that um, they are not that that this is that it is going to be a win-win situation um, mm -hmm. for the country. Yeah. There's also a lot of work from, um, for example, German institutions in Mongolia and other institutions. Is there a value to it to help in this um, process? Or do you think it should be something that comes from the people itself? Or do is it valuable that we empower the people to, s to see the change they want in their country? Mm -hmm. uh, well, um, for, for any cooperation, it's uh, the two parties or both part all parties agreeing to... to um, to to uh, implement the project and uh, reach or go towards a, a certain result. So, um, so it's it's not it's not only having an international organization, an actor, go and try to persuade Mongolians in in doing something, or it's not it's not vice versa where. Mongolians are reaching out saying we only want to do this and nothing else you know work with us or not um, it, it's it's uh, both sides coming to an understanding and I think at this this moment um, we should understand that all of and Mongolia parties in Mongolia and uh, the international community we want to strengthen democracy so that our um, 
human rights so that human rights um, fundamental rights are are protected guaranteed we also talk a little bit about your academic work in Mongolia and this project um, you had a lot of problems with getting information from other countries is that something that is also a problem in Mongolia to get to the information that you needed or is that something that it w wasn't a problem mm -hmm. at all in Mongolia to work with you mm -hmm. well uh, Mongolia well, and compared to many countries is relatively um, relatively open it um, uh, we we have many of the information even court decisions uh, we have a, a, a a portal, like a website yes. for court decisions that is available to the public. So anyone who wants to to go and look, um, dive into these uh, information, uh, whether it's from government institutions or NGOs, uh, it's it's quite available. But with the current political um, developments. Uh, where we have the the president, the the prime minister, and the the government, parliament, everyone's um, from the same party. This uh, one party um, system is is uh, is is coming very close. Uh, it might have come already. I'm not sure yet. But um, so since Mongolia is moving towards this one party system. And uh, the law that I just mentioned that tried to silence the, the people on social media and in the internet environment, I'm not sure if uh, this is going to continue, if this is going to be, if we're going to be transparent and open. Do you have any problems with that at all, or is that something that you... Did uh, not well, experience. Well, we, I was working together with Dolga yeah. actually, so so we were we were working as a team, and um, she was able to get uh, all the answers to the questions that the the, the study um, leaders were asking us to, to research. We didn't have any trouble. Um, considering the considering the findings of our study, what do you say? What are the most challenging things Mongolia uh, faces in its way to a true democracy within the next years? Well, I could mention maybe one one issue is women, actually, the representation of women in parliament. If we're talking about women's representation as an element of true democracy, I would, I would say that that's one challenge. Uh, they have a very low representation of women in parliament, and uh, I, I think that's one area that, that, that needs to improve to go forward mm -hmm. that, that I'm aware of. Yeah. Mm. Are there any hopes you have for the process? Where do you see your country in the <laughs> next decade? <laughs> well, so one of the the um, the issues that we can see from the from the research that we did was uh, silencing opposition, opposition having no power at all in parliament because uh, with only eleven seats, um, opposition doesn't well the parliament doesn't even need the opposition to uh, to pass a law. So that's one of the. Um, uh, one of the threats that we saw from the research, which has continued for two terms now, and it's likely to, to continue in the future if our opposition um, political party does not uh, come to an understanding in their internal conflicts. 